Hi there, in this video we're going to start looking at the top level of the CPU. Now before I get into logism, I thought I would draw out roughly what it was like. So we know that we've already designed the RAM. Okay, now the RAM's not actually inside the CPU. The RAM is a set of chips uh, outside the CPU, okay, that the CPU can write and read to. Okay, now we've done that. We've done the ALU as well. Okay, so the ALU is inside the CPU. And so we we'll call that RAM and ALU. Now, what else we're going to have are some temporary registers. Now, the registers are, are really simple things. They're just like the little single memory blocks that we've built in the RAM, and you'll see them whenever I get any logism. So these are just temporary registers, okay? And there's four of them, and uh, we're going to have say R zero. R1, R2 and R3, okay. We're also going to have a temporary register up here, just called TMP. And a register down here, now it's actually called an accumulator, so I'll just call it ACC. And we're also going to have another two registers here, which is an instruction address register and the instruction register okay now what these are actually do will become apparent whenever we start looking at the control unit and we see how the control unit controls all of this but for now we have a central bit there called the control unit so i'll just put in c u now the way this works is that these registers they have sets and enables. Okay, so they all have sets and enables. Now some of the registers only have a set, okay, and they all as opposed to set and enable. But I'll just put a set and enable in all of them, okay. Okay, so they set and enable all of these. There's also that's got a memory address register at the top, okay, and that's got a set and enable. So all these sets and enables. What they allow us to do, the set allows us to write to the memory and the enable allows us to read from it. Okay, so we can write into this by setting this high and we can read out of it by setting this high. Okay, so all of these sets enable, they all have to be controlled somewhere and they're controlled in this control unit. So this control unit connects all of these sets and enables okay and they all they all come in here and this control unit determines when one is set and when one is enabled so the control unit in effect you could be sitting there and the control unit could be saying something like okay um i want to go and run a program so the program is sitting in here so you start off in the first uh, address of your ram so it picks up the information that's in the first address of your ram it comes along and it puts it into the instruction register and that instruction goes in here so that's an input into this the control unit so the instruction comes in here and that instruction that comes in here actually that instruction along with all the circuitry in here tells which tell through this through the control unit tells all of these registers and all these other sections how to switch so for example let's say we have a little program to add two numbers so and maybe have uh, the first line would say this is a program to add two numbers the next um, memory address would be one of the numbers and then maybe the next memory address after that would be another number okay so it would get in there it would fetch the con the control code the op code which is telling us to add the numbers okay so and it goes down in the instruction register and that would then say okay go back into the next address the next address is about a data and it would say okay place the data into um, a register r0 okay so we would have to go and get the uh, uh, set the ram to enable to enable the output and then it would have to make the set and uh, the register r0 go high so that it would read that data in here and then it would have to take that 
and uh, that data would go into the LU and they'd have to go back and get the next bit of information let's say maybe it goes into R1 and uh, you get you can get the idea so we, we shift it around about and this the control unit would then tell the ALU that once you do the add function and it would add them together it would go into the accumulator and the accumulator once it was enabled it would enable the data back out but so you can see from that that the control unit the control unit really is the central part of this CPU it's the heart of the beaten heart of the, the CPU and it's the one section I wasn't really sure about and it was excellent actually getting it explained in this book um, but how do it know so it's really worthwhile to to have a read through that okay now that's all the sets and enables for the control you know what about the actual data so I've not actually drawn that in um, so the data would be passed round about on a common bus okay so basically you're gonna have eight wires I've only drawn I'll only draw one okay for obvious reasons so I try to draw it it would be it would just look like a mess so you've got a wire running through that so that's just a it's just a wire running through okay so there's actually eight of them and this connects into every single unit here so they've all got a connection onto the bus so they've all got access to the data that's flowing round about okay so all that one there okay so every section here has got access to that that bus so we can enable information onto the bus but when we enable information onto the bus it only comes from one spot so there's only one component in effect got access to the bus at any one time okay so you enable information onto the bus and also you can then set that information into any of these registers or uh, the accumulator instruction registers or uh, etc so that, that's the basis of how the machines work and you can see that's kind of like what we talked about when we talked about the universal Turing machine because it, it it took a number in and then it would read the number and then it would do something to the number okay uh, and it, it could change that zero to a one and it could shift on to the next number along so that, in fact this is doing the same sort of thing as a control that determines what you want to do with all your data so you can shuffle about here and you can shuffle into the ALU and then you can get the answer to whatever it is you're doing and you can pop it back into the RAM uh, so that's in effect our universal Turing machine so let's get in and have a look at it the one that's actually built up in Logisim okay so there we go so that there is the one of Bill and Logis. Make it a bit bigger. You can see, see that actually. Yep. So let me quickly talk you through this. Now um, there's a lot of extra added sections to it uh, that I'll get through in a different video. But all you have to understand here is that we have a RAM here. So that's the RAM that we built up. Okay. We have the LU. That's the LU that we built up there as well. And these are the registers, so the 1, 2, 3, 4 registers, R0, R1, R2 and R3. Now these are simple registers, the same type of register that we built for the for the memory section, okay, for the RAM, okay, so we can we can read data into the register with the set and we can enable data onto the bus with the enable. Okay, so we've got four of those and all of those have got access to the bus. Now, because of the vagaries of Logisim, we aren't allowed to have a, a an input-output pin. Okay, so we can only have a pin going from hierarchy, from one hierarchy to a, a, another different hierarchy. Uh, it can only go the one way. Okay, so it means we need to have an input pin and an output pin for each of these. Okay, so uh, that said, these are all the same. Okay, and that's a, a again that's a temporary register, and it's the same setup as that one. The only difference is it's only got the the set function. Okay, so it's only got the set. There's no enable uh, uh, required for that, uh, and we'll explain that at some other point in time. Okay, we'll get through it in more detail, and the ALU uh, passes the data out to another temporary register. 
that holds it and again it's got a set and enable so you can read to it and you can uh, you can write from it okay depending on the set and enable values and now again we've got instruction address register which is the same as these registers here so these are very simple things okay and a mere uh, instruction register which again it's only a single there's no enable section on that okay i'm only just showing you this just to get you familiar with the, the, this top level before we start using it and it, in order to understand how the control section works um it's good uh, actually in order to, in order to understand how the cpu works it's good to do it from this kind of top level uh, whenever i was working through i was working through it a little bit at a time and it was a slow laborious process trying to get it all together to to get it to work um i thought it was better doing that than just build and try to build it all at once okay so anyway um we have a few other extras that they're really in there just so that i could have a method of loading data into the ram because whenever i, I had finished this the actual design was in effect like a perfect cpu it was like a little baby and it had no knowledge in it whatsoever and i didn't actually i couldn't see a, a a simple method of of automatically putting um code in so i would have to sit down with uh my zeros and ones and actually just type in zeros and ones into it which was going to be long and laborious i wanted a, a different process or method of automatically loading in a, a program okay so i'll get to that in another video so all this extra here is all in order to load and we've got that reset remember i mentioned the reset function before uh, so that we can go in and uh, set all the memory to zero the reset appears at a few other places so we can re uh, in the control section there as well and this again this load in the memory address register this um, that's been added in order to do that load function we've got an end in there as well it tells me when my an extra bit i've added in as well it tells me when my um, code is actually finished it's, ru it's finished running okay and down here again i've got a counter here as well and that's a counting and it's part of the load function to load up the ram as well so all most of the extras that have been added are there to load up the ram okay there may be smarter ways of doing it but it's just a, a method that I've, I've used okay and that, that seems to work okay and again at this top level here we have our a little register there for all the flags okay that comes from the uh, the alu and there was an addition there the um a feedback there for the uh carry out to carry in for the alu again we'll get back to that at some other point in time also an important point was the clock 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 took me a while um i'll get into more detail um but I won't actually I won't talk about it right now, but I'll get it. That's another 10 or 15 minute video. So that's the clock section there, and it goes up to a, a hierarchy further up. Now I'm not going to show you the, the hierarchy further up just right now. We'll get back to that in another video. But that's the crux of the the CPU. Um, let's see how long this is going. 30 minutes. Long. Well, another couple of minutes there. I'll show you the actual top level. Okay. So there's one level higher up, and it's just the level I use in order to load all the stuff in. So the CPU test there is there. So that's the top level, okay? Now there's the CPU that we've designed. I'm gonna make that any bigger, actually. Let's see. A wee bit bigger, right? So that's the CPU that we've actually designed, okay? Now this here is our external RAM, okay? So I'm using this to load the the data now it's a bit uh, the way i've drawn it out if you were to get into the cpu i've actually shown this this ram sitting inside the cpu now it's, it's not actually quite right you know the ram would be wouldn't be inside the cpu the ram's outside the cpu but i'd already built all of that so I, I just left it all inside okay but that um ram which is actually shown inside I've actually, I'm actually loading that up from, in effect, an external RAM. So I'll, this is an automatic way of loading in the the programs. 
So what I can do is, and again, that's another video, I can write the code in uh, an Excel spreadsheet and then I, the Excel spreadsheet will automatically uh, assemble the code. Okay, so I'll take, I'll create it and it, uh, it'll create the ones and zeros required and I can load that directly into this RAM and that RAM will go directly into the RAM that you see sitting in this box, in the CPU box, okay? And the rest of what we've got up here, that's the, the, the value of the bus, which is in hex, and the value of the accumulator, instruction address register, instruction register, and all the other registers, R0, R1, R2, and R3, so I can see exactly what values that they have. I don't need to go into the lower levels, okay? So all the answers come out here at the top, and these are a few of the extras I've, I've had in. That's the clock, the top level clock. And I've added a few of these extras in here. Um, the, see the reset button and there's a load button to load in the, the data. And there's an end function there that tells me when it's finished. And Because uh, the clock is was quite involved, so I've, I've pulled out a few bits of information from the clock up here. Now, that's an overview of what we've got. So what I'll do is, uh, in the next video, I'll get, we'll get into the control section and it will become more apparent how this all holds together whenever we looked at the next video with the control section because we're able to see um, how the operation codes are developed and then obviously from that you could see how you end up with a um, assembly language and you could imagine, although it's not covered here, you can imagine taking the same language and going one hierarchy further up to um, actual uh, a higher level language. Okay, so that's enough for this video, and there's quite a few things to get through in the future, so uh, in the next few videos. Okay, so thank you for listening. Goodbye.